YouTube was good. It's your boy Laron Fima Rapidly. Yo, I'm back with another video. Please come in and thumbs up this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification. Hit all notifications so you have my videos in your possession each and every time that I go live or I do an upload. Yo, please make sure that you share this video. Please make sure that you support this channel. The cash app is on the screen. Dollar sign cookie confidant 83. So, you know, that's the ways you can support me. Share the video, cash app the show, and all of that. So, the first thing I want to get into is the situation um, with Alex. Baldwin. I'm pretty sure I remember the fatal shooting that happened on set, <clears throat> um, the shooting of, of Helena Hutchins. So I actually wanted to bring the article up. So just give me one second, just to kind of like paint the picture a little bit more fuller. So Alec Baldwin indicted on manslaughter charges and rust shooting. So this is Variety.com. So Alec Baldwin has been indicted on charges of involuntary manslaughter as prosecutors once again seek to hold the actor accountable for the unset death of cin uh, cinema photographer Halna Hutchins. Baldwin, 65, was initially charged in the case in January 2023, but the charges were dropped three months later after Baldwin's defense team raised questions about whether his Colt 45 was functioning properly when it fired. So Hutchins was uh, preparing to film a scene with Baldwin at the ranch near Santa Fe, New Mexico in October of 2021 when the gun went off. Baldwin, was, Baldwin has maintained that he did not pull the trigger. And it was an accidental shooting, I believe. So if convicted, Baldwin faces up to 18 months in prison. We look forward to our day in court, said Baldwin's attorneys. Um, come on, this is plain. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Said Baldwin's attorneys, Luke Nikas and Alex Spiro, in a statement made Friday. So... Two special pro prosecutors, Carrie Morrissey and Jason Lewis, sent the gun for further forensic testing last summer. Their experts, Lucian and Michael Hag, re reconstructed the gun, which had been broken during FBI testing, and concluded that it could, could ha it could only have been fired by a pull of the trigger. This fatal incident uh, was the consequence of the hammer being manually retracted to its fully rear rearward and cocked position followed at some point by the pull of the rearward depression of the trigger. The report concluded, although Alec Baldwin repeatedly denies pulling the trigger, given the testing findings and observations reported here, the trigger had to be pulled or depressed sufficiently to release the fully cocked or retracted hammer of the evidence revolver. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <clears throat> That's their ruling on that. That's that was their discovery. Morrissey and Lewis in October. Um, Morrissey and Lewis said in October that they intended to take the case to a grand jury within two months, stating um, that additional facts had become had come to light and pointed toward Baldwin's culpability. All right. At this time, Nika said that the decision was unfortunate. It is unfortunate uh, that a terrible tragedy has been turned into a misguided prosecution, Nika said. Uh, we will answer any ch uh, charges in court. The, the film's armor, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, is set to go on trial February 21st on charges of involuntary manslaughter and tampering with evidence. Gutierrez Reed mistakenly loaded a live bullet into Baldwin's gun, which was supposed to contain only dummies. Oh, she, she put a live bullet in the gun. Damn. So it remains unclear how live rounds became mixed with dummy rounds on set. Yeah, I do think she needs to answer to that. Um, as well. So Hutchins' widower, uh, Matthew Hutchins, filed a wrongful death lawsuit shortly after the shooting, but reached a settlement in October of 2022. The settlement provided for insurance funds and a portion of the film's profits to benefit the couple's son, who, who was nine years old when his mother was uh, taken out. So the film has since been completed in additional filming in Montana and is awaiting distribution. At the time of the settlement, Matthew Hutchins um, indicated that he did not blame Baldwin for the shooting. I have no interest in engaging in recriminations or attrib uh, attribution of blame to the producers or Baldwin, Hutchins said. All of us believe Helena's death was a terrible accident. That one who loaded that gun up, she need to answer for that. I am grateful that the producers in the entertainment community have come together to pay tribute to Helena's final work. A few months later, however, when Baldwin was first charged with manslaughter, Hutchins' attorney said that the charges were warranted. Um, probably after that check cleared, he probably didn't feel that way no more and the healing starts to go on. You know what I'm saying? So we support the charges. We'll fully cooperate with the prosecution and, and um fervently hope the justice system works to protect the public and hold in accountable those who break the law, said attorney Brian Panish in the statement at the time. Yeah, 
feelings change and money changes too. Unfortunately, money cannot replace a person's life, but you already know how that goes. So the initial prosecutors, Mary Carmack, Outweys, and Andrea Reeb held Baldwin responsible not only for pulling the trigger, but also for the series of management lapses that led to the relaxed safety standards on set. However, the New Mexico uh, Division of Occupational Safety and Health Administration concluded that Baldwin, though he was a producer on the film, was not in a position of management authority and was not culpable for the lack of oversight. Um, the first assistant director, David Halls, pleaded no contest last March to a misdemeanor um, to a misdemeanor gun charge. He was given six months of, months of unsupervised probation. So listen, I'm interested to see how that is going to turn out. Please make sure that you thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel. That was a little long article, so I want to make sure that I touch back in on that. You know what I'm saying? So let me know in the comments what you think about that situation. Do you think that Alex should be, do you think he should be charged? I think that it was truly an accident. And I forgot about that detail about that woman supposed to, she was supposed to load dummies into the gun and she didn't do it. So I think that she should be held culpable for that you know, um, situation. She should be on trial. They said that she's going to start on her trial starts on February 21st, but yeah, she needs to answer to that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, the next thing I wanted to go on to check this out, I'm pretty sure y'all seen this. This is viral on social media right now. So a man reveals that he had been kicked out of a storage unit. He was living in with his girlfriend after a TikTok video went viral. So let's play this video real quick. Living I live in the storage unit because it's cheap in comparison to an apartment. Living here is actually really comfortable. I get a lot of things that I need and want to get done here. I can exercise. I can use the bathroom. I can play music anywhere in the unit. It's climate controlled in here, so it's nice and warm. This unit is 24 hours, so I can come here anytime I want, stay here as long as I need to. We can take naps if we need to and go to sleep. So this wow. is our living space. Very, very grateful to have this space. The next goal is to get an RV. The next goal after that, tiny home. And if we want to eat, I just cook right out front. What? Or we'll just put... That's a fire hazard. <clears throat> um, so they got kicked out once the video started going viral. Wait, wait, let me see what this is. The unit sandwiches. A lot of times we make salad. If we want to get power, we use our power bank. They also have power here so we can charge our power bank. Me he obviously will live here as long as we need to. This man obviously wasn't thinking because why would you do that uh, and just put it on blast? Let me tell you something, though, real talk. One of my customers who was ordering, <clears throat> you know, product from my business back when I used to deliver, I delivered to her like a few times at the storage facility. And I'm telling you what may God strike me down right now. I said, is she living here? Why is she always here? And I asked her, like, you work here? And she didn't work there. So I think that may be something low key that people may do because how why are you at a storage facility all the time and she did not work there but it was just kind of like a, a mom situation but i just thought that that was crazy so i just wanted to definitely share that with you i also wanted to share this with you so a florida congressman matt gates speaks on trump voters he said for every karen we lose there's a julio and a jamal ready to sign up for the MAG, maga movement i want to know what y'all think about this now people soon forget um well they forget that uh Black people used to vote conservative, like, you know, Republican. You may disagree with that, but I think it's very true. And I think based on a lot of, um, you know, Black people as a whole, we are not a monolith and we are all different. But I'm telling you, like, a lot of us have a lot of conservative uh, view, views in regards to just many things. Anyway, check this out. I wanted you to hear this reporter say that about the Julio and Jamal ready to sign up for the MAGA movement. President Trump speaking out of his New York place on his way to New Hampshire right now. Florida Congressman Matt Gates joins me now. Congressman, I don't know if you had a chance to hear what President Trump said, but he basically called the entire court thing another sham, which I happen to think it is. And now he's off to New Hampshire to campaign more. The guy's a machine. 
there is a relentlessness and a persistence in the Trump campaign that I think really emerges out of the candidate himself. In Iowa, this victory was so huge. And really, it was a testament to the resiliency of the Trump voter Mm -hmm. because you had the worst conditions possible, uh, historically challenging weather and ice. And these folks came out and uh, voted overwhelmingly for the president. I met with a lot of those folks. This is the blue collar realignment of the Republican Party. And what I could tell you is like, for every Karen we lose, there's a there's a Julio and a Jamal ready to sign up for the MAGA movement, and that abodes well for our ability to be more diverse and to be more durable as we head into not only the rest of the primary contests, but also the general election. President Trump speaking out of his New York place on his way to New Hampshire right now. Florida Congressman Matt Gates. So, yeah, so I want to know what y'all feel about that. Also, are you um, Republican or or do you vote Democrat? I think that a lot of us vote Democrat based off of just historically how our families, especially black people, we vote based on like the the voting habits and behaviors of our family. But let me know. And, you know, in in the upcoming election, do you feel as though you're still going to remain, whether it's Republican or Democratic, Are the way that you're voting? Let me know in the comments and let me know how you feel about that. So listen, the next thing I wanted to move on to is Krishan Rock. It's like she is uh not tell you she's kooky. The girl is kooky. Now she's talking about blue face and she got the nerve to go on her Twitter and put, I'm locked up too. I'm waiting for daddy. Yo, this girl is so dysfunctional. I don't get like this is why I'm saying like on some real shit. I don't want to slow nobody paper up because I know like, listen, we in a day age of social media. It's money to be made out here. Make your money, get your money. Right. But I just feel like with um with Blueface, he needed to be sat down for a little while just like so that we could get this damn circus like over. And then we see she's still keeping it going. Every day is something new with Krishan. It's like, when is this whole shit going to get old with her? Like, you know, what I'm saying where people just pay her dust. When is it going to get old? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm locked up too. I'm waiting for daddy, please. Anyway, let's move right along. Eva Marcel, she comments on Taraji P. Henson speaking up about treatment in the industry. Now, the way that they wrote the title of this on the Neighborhood Talk, I felt like they made it seem like she was being shady. She actually wasn't being shady. So let's just check this out real quick with um, Eva Marcel. What about uh, Taraji? She's complaining that she didn't have food. She didn't have a car service. Women just got back to working. What do you think about her claims? What you think about her, Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> I think she was shut them up and let people make some money. I, I mean, I feel like to each its own, you know, it's like saying I got cut deeper than you got cut. So you can't really cry. I can cry harder. Um, you know, I'm I'm a woman's lib. I'm always going to be here for my women. So if, you know, Taraji feels like there's a situation that could have been improved and she wanted to speak on it by more more power to her. I'm just fortunate that the space where I work at and at TPS <laughs> I don't have any issues. Our work start on time. We finish on time. We get paid on time. I think it's funny that her and both, um, what's the other woman's name? It's escaping me right now. They always speak on, I don't have no issues. They want to wave a flag and let them know I ain't got no issues. I ain't complaining. I feel like once you make a complaint in this type of industry, it could blackball you, but let's continue. Life is good. I love my coworkers. I love my co-stars, my crew. Um, the creator, the, I mean, our <laughs> TP. Like, I love my show. So you weren't finna hit us with the biblical Fox response. Yeah. You? Oh, I'm we good over here. here. I yeah. mean, because, I mean, because essentially, and, and because not to slight my girl, I right. love Taraji. And Taraji has worked in this business for a long time. And to work in this business, I remember talking to one of my mentors, to work in this business as an actor, basically, you decided to be unemployed. That is Mm -hmm. what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. And so the way we get it in the paint, every single job, every extra dollar on that job as to our quote Mm -hmm. for our next job, our bottom line, it matters. The size of your dressing room, you can negotiate that like everything. If you got a chair on set, if you got a, a sleeve on the back of your chair, everything is negotiated and it's harder for us to negotiate. So the fact that she's speaking up, she's not doing nothing that Sydney Poitier and Viola Davis hasn't done for years. And I think that she should speak up. And I don't think it was anything wrong with what uh, Eva Marcel says. Some people, I think the way that they wrote this, it was, they tried to make it appear as though that it was shady. She just was saying that, you know, um, that Viola Davis, you know, she spoke up uh, about this in the past. So what I will say is, is that she's absolutely right. Like, you know, you have to make sure that you, 
you because listen, it's almost like the way that I feel about Cardi B coming into the game of hip hop, and I felt like she watered it down. It's like, no, it's not that you're at remember the point when she was coming up in 2017, 18, and Cardi was everywhere. No, baby, it wasn't that they couldn't, and Nikki was still doing her thing too. And it wasn't that they couldn't get Nikki, baby, but you're cheaper. They, and you know that you they, they come on, they know the difference, they know it. So, anyway, while we're talking about Nikki, let's talk about Nicki Minaj on Station Head. So, everybody knows that when Nicki Minaj, if you join Station Head and you're on that streaming app, I was on there listening to her, you know, when she goes and does her shows, and also, you know, the Pink Friday 2 album release. So, when Nikki first started going on, on there during her album release, she would have 20,000 people in the chat, right? So, then after the album went out for a while, you know, people drop off. It'll go from like 20,000, 15,000, 10,000. And then she did this episode the other day where she was talking, the day that Press Play came out with, Fe with Future, the one that she was talking about the, mis the mysterious industry male who was obsessed with her, which I think it was Jay Z. And it was related to Doja Cat, who was obsessed with her and trying to sabotage her and stuff like that. All of a sudden, for some reason, it's like she can't even break. Um, it's probably be like between three to four thousand people, and it's apparent that I feel as though that the app is trying to limit her her visibility as far as like like reach. Because you can't tell me that an app does not have the have the capability of either notifying people. Because how did a person go from having twenty thousand people to ten thousand people to four to three to four thousand people? It just to me, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't know, but unless mm, I will say this right. Just to introduce this thought, because I am well-rounded in thought, right? So who knows? Remember when she came on the app and it was like, you know, you have an album release. Who knows if there's a switch that they push in the back to where it's just like, okay, you have a release. It's an album release of a huge celebrity. You know, we'll push it to everybody. Maybe that's a thing I'm thinking, maybe, right? And then maybe after that kind of like dwindles off after, then they kind of like do it to the, I don't know. I'm just trying to just think of anything and everything possible. But to me, it was so suspicious that after she did that episode when Press Play came out and she was popping her shit, all of a sudden things changed and Nikki even said it was some sort of technical difficulty after she even did that episode on station head so listen you got to keep your eyes open it's always it's listen i always be feeling like either it's the powers that be or it's those i'm white and i say so type of games like why we got to play these games all the time i'm so sick of it you know what i'm saying so anyway um shout out to nikki though nikki's going you know on tour she just i think she just added new dates to her to her tour tour selling out 25 shows to sold out already so listen nikki ain't got no worries but i just wish that they treated her fairly and like stop trying to like hinder stop trying to hinder her like and trying to limit her i don't know what happened and what caused that i don't know if it was the conversation itself or what but anyway y'all this is your boy, Laurent, Female Rapidly. If you made it to the end of the video, please make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you thumbs up this video. Make sure that you support the show through the Cash App. The Cash App is on the screen, dollar sign, cookie, confidant, 83. I appreciate all of y'all who support my channel. Share the video and all that. Listen, this is your boy, Laurent, Female Rapidly. Please get in the comments. Let me know what you thought about anything that I talked about, from Nikki to Chris Sean to Eva Marcel to Raji, also um, the Eric Baldwin situation and the uh, uh, Republican-Democrat talk. So anyway, this is your boy, Laurent, Female Rapidly. Rapidly.